find out more. Arrive alive. Drive so. You're watching Rogers TV. Hello, and welcome to the What's Up London show. I'm your host, Jennifer Slay. Let's take a moment and acknowledge that the lands that we are on here, in what we now call London, Ontario, are the traditional lands of the Anishinaabek, Haudenosaunee, Lanaipawak, and Shanonton peoples. I sincerely express my gratitude to the Indigenous people and their ancestors for what I and my family have received as settlers on this land. I also acknowledge and show gratitude to my ancestors who came before me, who made it possible for me to be sitting here today. Mm. Today's show will range in all types of topics, charity, breakfast, basketball, and free tacos. Our first guests are from <laughs> London Cares and the Congregation of the Sisters of St. Joseph. They are here to talk to us about the long-anticipated community hub, which will provide a range of supports and services to individuals experiencing homelessness or other barriers to wellness, as well as those seeking community belonging. Let's hear more. Welcome, Anne and Sister Margo. How are you? Good, thank you. Yes, <laughs> very good. Awesome. Glad to be here. Thank you, thank you. So tell us more about the community hub. Sure. So we started uh, planning as a uh, partnership. Um, we were all actually looking for new space at, um, at the same time. And so we got linked together through various uh, mutual colleagues and uh, came together to decide that maybe we could co-locate in a building. And then in having conversation about shared values, shared do we really want to partner together, uh, we actually decided to take a further step and say, perhaps we could look at integrated service solutions. Yes, so we, we've spent a long time and Margot is our values expert and uh, <laughs> she helped gut us. We spent a long time in conversation around values. Yeah. Mm. One of the values that we talked a lot about and I think it's interesting to know it was over a year that we met just talking about this. Oh. Are we aligned deeply enough mm. to take this next step? Mm -hmm. And one of the values that we landed on, we named deep hospitality kind of meaning that deep sense of belonging that we wanted everyone to experience. Mm -hmm. And I think along with that, this has been a bit of a subtext of our work together. While we are offering our services uh, at 602 Queen's Ave, each of our organizations are also involved in helping to, as one person knew, rock the boat a bit, mm -hmm. to see if the system itself can flex and be more hospitable to people. Right. right. It's working in those systems and then integrating yourselves in there and making it work for the, ultimately the client, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so what are some of the services that your community hub will offer? Sure. So um, we started out, so each of the agencies, so it's um, London Cares, Sisters of St. Joseph, St. Joe's Cafe, um, Regional HIV AIDS Connection, and Thames Valley Family Health Team. Um, so we're all co-located there and then um, so the sisters opened their cafe in the summer and so that's food security for people who are pretty marginalized in our community and then just this past week the what we're calling the community hub itself um, opened and uh, we offer um, showers, laundry, drop-in for warmth. Um, you know, do you need dry clothes? Um, all of those very, very basic needs. Bathrooms, it's amazing to me how that very big, basic dignity of having a bathroom is so important to people and isn't always accessible right. for those who are experiencing homelessness. So yes, we're, we're thrilled to have been able to open. And um, in the first morning, it's interesting, um, 11, uh, there were 11 showers. So that tells you the need. Mm -hmm. um, in one morning, 11 people came in for a shower, the first oh. morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And with, oh, I, I just can't imagine what it would be like to be experiencing homelessness and then 
obviously the basic needs that we take for granted, just mm -hmm. being able to shower and clean up and use the washroom and all of those mm -hmm. things, it, we take it for granted. Mm -hmm. And what I really love about the, the service now is there are so many services within one location. Mm -hmm. You don't have to say to somebody, if you just walk three blocks over that way, they can help you out there. And so what we're finding, as Anne mm -hmm. spoke about the showers and the laundry, people will come to, into the cafe, have breakfast or have lunch, mm -hmm. go have a shower, do their laundry. And our best hope too with the medical health team, the family mm -hmm. health team there, they will be able to provide some primary care. Mm -hmm. And one of the pieces that we were talking about yesterday was a real need is wound care and foot right. care, or if somebody comes in with frostbite. Mm -hmm. And so I guess the image that we have is in the common space, all of the staff would be able to come in and get to know people by name. And so that that trust could be built together. Yeah. Yeah, that's a wonderful collaboration mm -hmm. and really client-centered, mm -hmm. right, really client-centered. Mm -hmm. We're very um, fortunate. We have built into the design a number of flex offices, so we will very soon be extending out to our community partners to come offer your services in one of our flex offices. Maybe you'd mm -hmm. like to be there a day a week, or two days a week, and the intention, I think, um, as we roll forward is uh, for folks who are marginalized in our community, this is one-stop shopping. You don't have to go three blocks, you know, another six blocks over here, take the bus over there. It is about come here to one location and we will uh, hopefully get you connected to everything you need when you're ready. Mm -hmm. And uh, as Margot said, it is a very much a place mm -hmm. of trust mm -hmm. and belonging. And the address? 602 Queens Avenue. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for, for this initiative and the collaborations that you've made to support our more and more marginalized in our community. Thank you. Thanks Thank so you. much, Jennifer. We'll be right back. This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. Carbon monoxide is a deadly gas you can't see, smell or taste. Homes with fuel burning appliances and or attached garages must have working CO alarms installed outside all sleeping areas. Don't let the silent killer get you. Install working CO alarms today. I'm Mike Jack. I've broken multiple world records and won several competitions for eating some of the world's hottest peppers. Now I'm challenging London restaurants to make some of the world's hottest food. Yeah, you speak <laughs> <laughs> oh, how are you doing, man? Uh oh. Watch Jack Up the Heat Mondays at 5 30. It was my daughter's birthday. She was blowing out the candles on her cake when we heard coming from the TV. So we stopped and listened, and it helped us get to safety. That's why when I think of I think of my daughter's birthday. Because now she gets to keep having them. You're watching Rogers TV. Welcome back. Since 1982, Youth Opportunities Unlimited has helped lead youth ages 15 to 29 in London and Middlesex County towards success. They believe that investing in youth results in stronger communities. They are here to specifically talk to us about their 17th annual breakfast, where there will be a few surprises for the guests. Welcome Fatima and Mark. How are you? Pretty we, good. Thank yeah. you. Pretty great. Thanks for having us. No problem. So before we get into the breakfast, tell us about YOU. What exactly is Youth Opportunities Unlimited? Well, YOU um, was founded in 1982, actually, mm -hmm. and uh, we're uh, kind of like a one-stop shop for uh, young people who may be facing uh, challenges uh, surrounding homelessness, uh, precarious housing uh, situation, um, and help with employment as well. Um, and just all, all yeah. really wrapped around and yep. 
services. So, yeah. yeah, we're a local <laughs> not-for-profit yeah. that offers a variety of different wraparound supports, uh, like a lot of different services. So we have the career services aspect, help with employment, uh, uh, you know, assistance with finding affordable housing, assistance with completing uh, your high school education. We have on-the-job skills training, a variety of different supports. And then also, we do have a new project underway called Jones Place, uh, which Mark actually oversees. Um, nice which is going to be affordable housing for young moms and new families. So oh, nice. yes, a variety, a variety of different Definitely that one-stop shop. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 So tell a little, just quickly, Jones Place. What's that? Yes, so Jones Place is going to be a 39-unit affordable housing uh, building that is currently under construction at the corner of York and Richmond. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking at an opening of uh, 2024 for that. And uh, yeah, it's really gonna be another one-stop shop within a one-stop shop <laughs> um, for uh, <laughs> mostly primarily for young mothers um, and uh, their, their children and their families uh, to live in at a reduced uh, rent. So just giving young people yet another step, yeah, greater another, another chance. Amazing. Greater accessibility. Yeah. That is amazing. And so definitely need things like this breakfast that you're mm -hmm. going to tell us about to yeah. fundraise so that you can afford to do these things. Yes, exactly. absolutely. It is, uh, I will say that the breakfast is our signature event. It's our biggest uh, event of the year. Uh, it's, it's, it's buzzing. It's buzzing. And yeah. I will actually <laughs> Throw in a fun fact, I suppose, before we proceed uh, to share the details. Uh -huh. um, in 2020, uh, we sold out the event at 1,200 attendees. It was the biggest uh, fundraiser in, well, I suppose, the organization's history, which was pretty cool. And then the pandemic happened, oh. you know. And so we have been virtual over the last uh, few years. Mm -hmm. But you know, I am very, very excited to just return in person, return yeah. in person. And I'm really hoping that London will you know, come through and help us uh, fill that room. Um, because yeah, uh, as uh, you know, as is evident, it is, it is for a really great cause. Mm -hmm. um, uh, all of the money that is raised does go uh, towards youth's most pressing needs. So yeah, I really, you know, I'm really hoping people will be there, but there are some, you know, fun, fun reasons uh, as to why they should attend as well, which yes. we're happy to Why share should eventually. they attend, Fatima? Why, what's <laughs> going to be there? So a lot of things. Um, <laughs> all right, let me tell you. <clears throat> so, uh, well, first of all, before I suppose we get to why they should be there, I will share that it is happening on Friday, February 10th, uh, 7 to 9 a.m. at RBC Place. Um, and uh, yeah, the morning of, they can expect a breakfast buffet. Mm -hmm. And uh, this year we will have a former youth uh, named Cheyenne who I've gotten to know through volunteering. So I'm very, very much looking forward to her sharing her story. She's gonna be sharing uh, you know, challenges that she's experienced and just her journey up until present. So that's going to be like every year, you know, the, the breakfast is a super inspiring and energizing morning. Um, so yeah, that part's going to be, it's yeah, just for that alone, people should be there uh, to hear her story. Um, but what's more is that people are going to have the f chance to win a ton, a ton of prizes, oh. generously donated by you know several businesses in our community. Um, thank you. <laughs> I don't know where to look, <laughs> but thank you. Uh, special shout out to them. Um, but yeah, being on the prizes committee, I can personally attest to the fact that people are in for a real treat. Nice. Um, there's going to be spa packages, hotel stays, jewelry, like gift cards to breweries, dining experiences, and so much more. Nice. So the day of, we're going to be selling, so at like the morning of the event, we're gonna be selling $20 gift boxes. Uh, we take cash or debit, mm -hmm. you know versatility uh so we're gonna be selling these gift boxes and in these gift boxes you're gonna have the chance to win a one or many uh prizes uh to take home with you that sounds so. amazing what a phenomenal event yeah. <laughs> phenomenal prizes is just mm -hmm. good all all the way around and Absolutely. it's a great organization thank you both for being here i appreciate you so much thank you thank you for having us yes. no problem. <laughs> we'll be right back This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. Monday. Hi, I'm Darielle from All Legal and All Contracts, and I'm this week's guest on Pollinating Purpose.
night's action on Rogers TV. I did it. I need it. The hero gave it. And I am alive. As an organ donor, you can save up to eight lives and enhance the lives of 75 others. Please go to our website. Pledge a gift of life. You'll be glad you did. You're watching Rogers TV, London. Welcome back. The London Abused Women's Centre is partnering with the London Lightning for the annual Shine the Light on Women Abuse Purple Game. Since the inception of the team, the London Lightning participate in the efforts of the Shine the Light on Women Abuse campaign through this partnership with the London Abused Women's Centre to help raise awareness of male violence against women. Welcome, Fabienne. Hello, thanks for having me here today. No problem. So tell us about this partnership and, and the campaign. Yeah, so when the London Lightning uh, started their, their team and the organization, they actually approached us in the early days of uh, 2011 and, and wanted to know if there would be a possibility for us to work together closely uh, between the sports organization and the London Abused Women's Center. And we developed uh, a, a game guide for a purple game that we host every year year in honor of the Shine the Light on Women Abuse campaign and it's been a very positive experience every single year when we were able to play. There was mm -hmm. I believe one season where uh, because of COVID we couldn't do any games. Mm -hmm. Right and you have a special item here. Yeah that's... so I will be happy to share that a little bit. So um, with the with the purple game or the Shine the Light game with the London Lightning um, the point is that we wear a raise uh, we raise awareness and the players are all wearing purple jerseys. They're changing their traditional uniform colors from yellow uh, to purple and um, the fans can bid on those jerseys during the game. They will be signed by each player of whosoever jersey mm -hmm. they're bidding on and and then the lucky winner has a wonderful beautiful jersey that they can wear forever but also to just bring a little bit more purple into the room most fans are very aware of this game we've been doing it for years but sometimes they forget or they don't have anything purple so we thought we add a little bit um, of something so we have the t-shirts we will have them at the game that I'm wearing but we also purchased some pashminas just for the game uh, so if anybody would like uh, you know, to have something purple. They might be wearing their traditional lightning colors. So we have the pashminas there. There will be a few things just to make the game a lot of fun. So mm -hmm. you can you can bid on your jerseys while you're sitting there. It's an online auction. There's a QR code that you receive when you attend the game. There will be a 50-50. There will be all kinds of things, but also there'll be excellent sport and great entertainment. Mm -hmm. So, And with the pashminas, you can only get them at the game. Very right? exclusively only at the game. And the right. same with the with the jerseys. Um, you have to be at the game to bid on it. Although you can, you can bid uh, online mm -hmm. um, the QR code is only shared right. while you're at the game right. and are there other sports teams that are involved in shine the light yeah it, it has been a good experience for us over the years so currently we have a very good uh, partnership as well with the London Whitecaps the soccer team for three years now they are hosting an all-girls three-day tournament it's coming up in June um, these partnerships are very important to us um, mm -hmm. and we love that in both cases and we did work very closely with the London majors I want to mention and also with FC London. It's when the organizations take it up on themselves to reach out to us, gather information about the issue of woman abuse and how they can incorporate that within their own organization. Mm -hmm. So how do they speak with their players? How do they talk about this issue with management. What do they do when there is a case of a player or management mm -hmm. being laid with charges right. of intimate partner abuse, sexual assault? So these conversations are only happening and meaningful if it really comes from the heart. Mm -hmm. And in those cases, and specifically for now in the case of the London Lightning, that's where it's coming from. And then for us to have the opportunity to be at Budweiser Garden and spread the word on such mm -hmm. a large scale yeah. is, is a a 
incredible opportunity yeah. that we're truly thankful for. Yeah, with the education that is, is being shared now, um, people are being held more accountable. And it, it sounds like these sports teams are really taking it to heart. They're taking it to heart. And, and again, the importance of that is just tremendous. And we're so thankful for that. Yes. And if Londoners want to support, they can always go to your website and donate that way as well. Absolutely. There's right. always that opportunity. And we always welcome people visiting our website in general just to learn more about our services. Great. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. And good luck with the event. Yeah, thank you. I'm very excited. <laughs> we'll be right back. Every year, dozens of Canadians are killed or seriously injured because they take risks around railway tracks. Talk to your loved ones about rail safety. Visit StopTrackTragedies.ca Send them home! Get rid of them! Gentlemen, gentlemen, please! And so, this organ, which I regret I cannot name, because of the presence of these members of the weaker sex, who, although they are married, could not possibly endure. <laughs> Get them out. This is Ginny. Patience. Get them out! Dr. McFarlane! Mrs. Trout. There's no place for women in a medical school. Yeah. Yeah. Get them out! You do not bring this classroom under control. I am going to repeat every word of this disgusting lecture to your charming wife. My friend Jenny Trout was not the only woman to face this kind of thing in medical school. But she would become the first woman licensed to practice medicine in Canada. Hi everyone, my name's Ranger M. I love to knowledge share, and that's just what I'm going to do with you. So come on, let's go learn with Ranger M. Welcome back. Do you like tacos? Do you like free? Well, what if I told you that you have an opportunity to win free tacos for a year. Would you want to hear more? Please welcome Natasha Bayage, Senior District Manager for Redberry Taco Bell, who will tell us how to enter the contest. Okay. Welcome. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, so just a little bit of detail about our company and uh, Redberry Canada is one of the biggest um, franchisees growing in Canada with over 176 restaurants already wow. with uh, three different brands. And now um, they are committed to opening um, 200 more locations in Canada for Taco Bell. Wow. With uh, the start of our first location, um, it's a new build, it's in London at 1850 Adelaide Street. And we have two more in London and um, we have one around in St. Thomas. The new location is beautiful. Uh -huh. it, has, um, it, has a, it has a dual drive-through uh -huh. and also inside dining room is just beautiful. Uh -huh. So please visit us and um, sure. you know, uh, you can you get a chance to win free tacos for a year. Yeah. That's over nine hundred dollar value over a year, and then also there are around twenty other gift prizes mm -hmm. from um, that contest, and um, it's it's um, one d one entry per day. So you can go as many times as you want. So while how the do contest people enter the contest? So like when they go to the store, mm -hmm. they get. Um, they get a form which they can fill and put it in the ballot box. We will select just two lucky winners from the ballet and mm -hmm. announce the winners that Taco Bell, uh, Canada and Redberry will contact them for their details. Oh, wow. So someone's going to win free tacos Absolutely. for a year. So is it one person per restaurant that can win? or how? Do, how so right now we are running this contest at uh, the new location, okay. which is 1 at 50 Adelaide Street. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, two lucky winners get a chance to win that. <laughs> okay, well that's exciting. As I was telling you before we started, my, my middle son yeah. loves 
Taco wow. Bell. <laughs> That's you amazing to know. That's amazing. I'll absolutely have some free coupons over to you once a week. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, and so you said that you're opening a lo location in London. How, there'll be three locations total in London? Yes, currently, uh, after we open this location, mm -hmm. which is a new build, we have three locations in London now. Okay. And I'm, I'm very happy to say, I think, uh, the response we have seen in London, and I think Londoners will love a new location. Yeah, yes. yeah. So if someone was interested in um, maybe being a franchisee, with, with, would they be, is there still that opportunity if somebody wanted to open a store? I think there are multiple opportunities, but at the same time, I think they should contact Taco Bell Canada directly yeah. to know further details about yeah. the same. Because right now, people are wanting to be an entrepreneur, yes. right? And so, absolutely. And, and as things are opening up again, yes. you know, yes. there's those opportunities. That's wonderful. Okay. So, I'm not sure, I'm putting you on the spot, yes. but what would be the, most common thing that people order, like the most popular item, do you think that people oh, order? Oh, people love the crunch wraps. The and crunch wraps. So, yes. what's the crunch wrap? Crunch wrap is um, it comes with beef, nacho cheese, tostadas, lettuce, and it's grilled. Uh -huh. And um, then I think the second favorite is probably Fry Supreme. I think oh. we cannot get over Fry Supreme. It's one of the I best. do love the Fry Supreme. <laughs> I agree. It's one of our best. <laughs> well, for those who don't know about the Fry Supreme, can you just explain exactly what's on there? So, Fry Supreme is served with a lot of hot fries. It comes with beef. Uh, comes with nacho cheese and then we top it up with some sour cream and tomatoes. Mm -hmm. So it's just amazing. <laughs> yes, it sounds amazing. Okay, so the crunch wrap, crunch wrap, and, yes. the, and the fry, fry supreme. supreme. Those are the two most common. Yes. Okay. Now, are you allowed to let us know if there's anything new coming? Is Taco Bell going to release a new item? So just a small. Um, yeah, so we are getting Mexican pizza back. Uh -huh. It's coming up in February. Okay. It's starting on February 6th. And that's, I think, uh, it's after a couple of years. Uh, Taco Bell Canada is bringing Mexican pizza back and I don't think we couldn't be more excited about oh, it. Oh, awesome. You heard it here first? Yes. Here first? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here and good luck with the opening. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Well, that's a wrap. Thank you for watching and for listening. Please show your support to our guests by visiting their social media pages and supporting their initiatives. I look forward to being here again with you next week, and I ask that you please like, comment, and share this episode with your friends. Also, the end of this week is going to be the, the start of Black History Month. So please make sure that you go online and find the different events that are here in our city and get edutained. Be well, take care, and I'll see you next week. the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Mary Wilaya and I'm the host of a new show here on Rogers TV that we're calling Keeping London Healthy with Dr. Mario. I'm a local family physician here in London, and I'm very excited to be working with Rogers TV on this new format, which will give us an opportunity to, to explore all sorts of topics related to medicine and health. So tune in Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. We'll see you then.
You're watching Rogers TV.